Welcome to chapel at the Institute of Lutheran Theology. My name is John Sorum. I'm Dean of Academic Affairs. I'm glad to be here with you today to bring you a message from God's Word and to lead us in our prayer as a community. We begin today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel for Transfiguration Sunday from Luke chapter 9. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, Jesus leads us up to the mountaintop to see his glory. And we're not going to be the same afterwards. We are mightily confirmed, established, strengthened in faith in Jesus Christ alone. Because Jesus is glorified. And Moses and Elijah appear to confirm that he is the fulfillment of the law and of the prophets, the Old Testament scriptures. And then the cloud comes, the cloud of glory, the very presence of the Holy God, and overshadows us. And the voice comes from the cloud. This is my son, my chosen. Listen. To him. Listen to him. We don't feel the bite of these words until we recall how hard Jesus is to listen to. His words are difficult, impossible even. How can we listen to him? Jesus says, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Woe to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation. We're rich. We certainly don't like to hear woes pronounced on us. Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. What kind of way is that to live? Who can listen to such talk? The voice says, Listen to him. But when Jesus sent the 70 on their preaching mission, he told them they should take no money with them, not even an extra change of clothes. He said he was sending them like sheep in the midst of wolves, and he predicted that large numbers of people would reject their announcement. What kind of instructions are these? Who can live like that? You have to have money. And you have to recruit large numbers of people in order to have a successful movement. Jesus is hard to listen to. The voice says, listen to him. But Jesus told the story of a man, the one we call the Good Samaritan, who went out of his way and to considerable expense to help a person who held him in contempt. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. That's hard to listen to. 
to a man who wanted to inherit eternal life, he said, you lack one thing. Go sell all you have and give it to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and then come follow me. Who can listen to that? Worst of all is what Jesus had just been saying to the disciples right before they went up onto the mountain. He said the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, chief priests and scribes, and be killed on the, on the third day, be raised. What kind of way is that to accomplish anything? Jesus is describing utter defeat. What good does Jesus do if he gets himself wasted? Listen to him, the voice says. Yet Jesus then goes on to say that all who want to follow him must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow him. You have to lose your life in order to save it. Who can listen? to that kind of teaching, a counsel of defeat, throwing away your life. Yes, Jesus is hard to listen to, to the point where we cannot endure his words. So we don't. We ignore what he says. We avoid his hard words and keep them at a comfortable distance. Now the simplest way to do that is simply not listen to his word proclaimed, keep the Bible collecting dust on the shelf, stay away from church, any church where the scriptures are proclaimed. And if we can't avoid his hard words altogether, because after all we would like to be Christians, then we find ways of smoothing them over and making them acceptable. Oh, Jesus didn't mean that we shouldn't be rich, just that we should have the right attitude toward riches, to have them as if we didn't have them. But Jesus plainly said, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Or we say, when Jesus says, turn the other cheek, he doesn't mean we should not stand up and defend ourselves. He just doesn't want us to go overboard. And we have a fine way of taking Jesus' words and massaging them until they fit into our world comfortably, so we really don't have to listen to him. But most often, we simply distract ourselves. We may hear all those hard words of Jesus about denying ourselves and losing our lives for his sake and taking up our cross and so on, but we just let them go past us. So we scroll through Facebook, or redouble our dedication to work, or switch on the TV. Maybe we think about practical things, what we're going to have for dinner tonight, or what we're going to do this afternoon. Anything to block out Jesus and his hard words. We could easily sleep our way through life, like the disciples on the mountaintop who are dozing off. We can go on and on, living on the surface of things, amusing ourselves, wasting our days, anything so we don't have to listen to his words. So we disobey that voice from the cloud. And we are endlessly ingenious in coming up with ways of not listening to him and going on with our lives without his word ringing in our ears. But now, here we are at the mountaintop. Here we see Jesus as he is. And we learn that he is the one, the one and only, the chosen one, the beloved son of the Father. And we're brought to our senses. We're shaken and awakened from sleep as those disciples were and we see this all as plainly as can be. Jesus shines with the glory of God. And Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, are talking to him about these very same hard words that we don't want to listen to. They're talking about Jesus' departure, that is, his suffering and his death that he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Then they withdraw having borne witness to him, leaving Jesus standing all alone. 
So we know Jesus is the one. The voice declares it. God's own voice. This is my son. The beloved. The chosen one. God announces the glorious truth to us. This is my son, the beloved. No other name exists under heaven by which we are to be saved. He is the one with whom we have to do. Everything depends on our relationship with him because he alone announces God's pardon and welcome for sinners, good news of great joy for all people. He announces that the great eternal party has begun, that party that is the, the wedding feast of the Lamb <laughs> with his people. And that party is, so, is, is uh, the expression of a joy that never, ever comes to an end. The final kingdom is near. And that joy already is kindled, and that begins right now. So as hard as he is to listen to, we are compelled this day to stand with him and listen, just listen. Where else could we possibly turn except to him? Can we fool ourselves anymore after having been to the mountaintop that we can go on avoiding him and shutting ourselves off from him? He is the one. He is the beloved one, the beloved son, the chosen one. He alone, no one else. And here he is, right here with us today, revealing his glory to us, the one who announces pardon and peace for sinners, for you and for me. He, and he alone, speaks the words of eternal life. So now the time has come for us to listen. The time has come for us to stop our evasions, to stop our avoiding him, to stop shutting ourselves off from him. The time has come simply to be still and to listen to what he has to say to us. Simon Peter babbled about making shelters for Jesus and Moses and Elijah up there on the mountain. We're told explicitly he didn't know what he was talking about. Our church buildings are shelters, but they weren't built as convenient places where we can keep Jesus and Moses and Elijah uh, so that we don't have to deal with them and listen to them. Church buildings are built as places to be still and listen to Jesus. So let's do just that. Let's be still and listen to him. We may not understand him completely. In fact, we surely won't. Because Jesus is the very mystery of God, true God from true God. We're shown that today. We could never possibly penetrate to the very depths of who he is. We certainly cannot encompass him within our understanding. The crucial thing is that we listen to him. We may find ourselves puzzled, awestruck, perhaps grief-stricken, perhaps angry. But in any case, we listen. And then we keep on listening. And then we listen again and again, and again. And as we're listening, we pray the greatest of all prayers, the prayer for the Holy Spirit. We pray that the Holy Spirit may enlighten our hearts and our minds so that we will be open to hear and able to hear what Jesus says to us and believe his words and obey from our heart as God's new people. The voice from the cloud says, listen to him. And he has made promises to us. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. He said, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, will your heavenly Father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So let's ask. Let's seek, let's knock, and then keep on listening 
and keep on listening. We listen because we bend to the mountaintop. The veil has been removed. We behold his glory. He is transfigured before us, and we see that he shines with the light of God. And we have been overshadowed by the cloud of his glory, as terrifying as it is. And we have heard the voice, this voice full of joy and peace and promise and gift to us. This is my son, the beloved. I present him to you. Here he is for you, and he is for you. So we can do no other except to listen to him and then listen again, and then listen again. Lent is about to begin. Lent means springtime. It is the time of renewal. Let it be for us a time to listen to Jesus. Take time to read the scriptures, maybe one chapter each day. Listen for Jesus' voice in the Bible. You have been to the mountaintop. You know who he is. You have heard the voice from the cloud. Listen to him. He is the one who takes your burden. He takes your guilt, your worry, your fear, the oppression of death itself. Why would you want to hold on to those things? What do you have to gain by holding on to those things? And you have everything gained to gain by listening to him. You gain pardon, full and free, and the adventure of real life, abundant life, and the joy that will not die, the hope that will not disappoint, the love of God poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And finally, you will behold Jesus in all his glory for all eternity. Yes, all of these things are ours. Just obey the voice from the cloud. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Let us pray for all people according to their needs and for the Church of Jesus Christ in particular. Father, today we kneel in awe and adoration before the divine majesty of your Son, revealed at his transfiguration. Sometimes our devotion grows cold and our prayers and worship become perfunctory. Enlighten our mind to always catch a glimpse of his glorious presence. Kindle our hearts and spirits to worship and obey him with holy fear, deep joy, and fervent love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, beyond all praising, we worship you and adore your glory revealed in the transfiguration of your beloved Son. Grant that your church may obediently listen to his word. Hold fast to him in its, in its heavenly calling. Preach him alone as the way of salvation. And thus proclaim to the whole world his blessings without number and his mercy without end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant to your persecuted people a firm confidence in the hope that has been established through the steadfast obedience of Christ our Lord. Give your people, Father, grace to triumph through their sufferings and rise to serve you even in the presence of those who trouble them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our hearts to you on behalf of all those whose lives are clouded by any sort of affliction or sorrow especially those we name silently in our heart before you now. Let the light of Jesus' countenance heal and cheer them. Let all who care for them do so with tenderness and compassion. 
and grant that together we may praise you for your unending mercies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon the meeting of the ILT Board of Directors taking place now, today and tomorrow. We pray that your spirit would guide them as they hear reports, as they make decisions, as they plan the future of this uh, institution dedicated to proclaiming the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, our beautiful Savior, those who have died trusting in your promises now see you face to face. We thank you for bestowing this blessing upon them. Continue, we pray, to show to us your amazing love. And though we are your unworthy servants, bless us with those good gifts that will sustain us and others in this life. Bring us in your good time into that endless life and light you share with all whom you have redeemed. And give us voices there to sing unceasingly glory and honor, praise and adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these things, dear Father, and for whatever else you will for us in your wisdom and compassion, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Lord, and King. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.